It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to this roundtable discussion on impunity in the Philippines. This is part of a month-long campaign for the declaration of the first international day to end impunity. It thus serves as a second anniversary of the Akatuan massacre of 58 persons, including 32 journalists. The campaign represents a global advocacy to defend freedom of expression and press freedom around the world. But it looks at impunity as making vulnerable not just journalists, artists, activists, but also ordinary citizens. Yes, it takes all of us, representing the different sectors in this room, to try and begin to focus on some real doable points of action or policy shifts or policy changes or new legislation. We are going to be complaining each year, come November 23, we hope to be able to yield the place of one of the most dangerous assignments for some other country. It may may not happen unless we begin to put our heads together and bring home to our headquarters what indeed we are asking each other to do. Not only journalists and media personnel or political activists that are being murdered, murdered but the number of our judges and court personnel as well has also been vic victims of acts of lawless violence. Uh, and so we at the judiciary are one with you in the aim of bringing justice and ending impunity in this country. Well, on the side of the courts, admittedly, delays occur in the resolution of a case which may be affected by a number of considerations. For one, the fact that our existing courts are handling more than their ideal number of cases. Previous studies show that the manageable case load for a second level court or an RTC is 300 to 500 cases, while for a first level court, such as the Metropolitan Trial Courts, the Municipal Trial Courts, etc., ranges from 500 to 600. Currently, a lot of our courts are handling more than these ideal number of cases. On the other hand, the court is also endeavoring to adopt a more effective monitoring or case management plan for each branch to answer the problem of case decongestion and delay in the resolution of cases. Currently, we are pilot testing the project in adopting a new reporting method which has been uh, yielding positive results. It has been mentioned already, but uh, I would like to sort of highlight this. Uh, our procedures allow prosecutors to, to be involved in the case build-up. Unlike in the procedures in other advanced countries, United States, Germany, France, where, where prosecutors and investigators work together in the case build-up. We'd like to particularly thank the Secretary of Justice because in some cases, being handled by task force is inclusive. She allowed certain prosecutors to work with investigators. That's why we, we, there were noticeable improvement in case build-up. The, the other countries are wondering why we could not do it uh, as, a, as a general rule. So our recommendation is if it could happen, that we should allow prosecutors to work with investigators in the case build-up in order to, 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 build, uh, to develop an airtight case. So I think all all firearms of government should be registered, it should be ballistic, it should be, they're, 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 uh, they should be uh, properly documented. So we have, been, we have been trying to do this with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and uh, just yesterday we were at the office of the Secretary of the Interior, and uh, he, he said he would again uh, try to do to uh, invite the AFP to have the firearms registered and be recorded in our uh, in our records. Local officials are involved. Unfortunately, the local officials then choose their pet officers, and the pet officers can then help to cover up any of the wrongdoings of the local officials. I mean, I'm I'm going to be very honest about what this situation does involve. If it is in the law. 
Uh, you did say, Jarma Marquez, a little while back, that we need to reinvent the appointment system. Okay? Either of investigators or police chiefs, etc., etc. I think you might put that down, all their law enforcement officers. What? How would you like to respond to that? I mean, what is the what is our expectation <laughs> of this law ever being passed? Uh, amending the law probably <laughs> would 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 require. Uh, would require the PNP some help from the, the civil society because on their own, uh, we, we, if we are to make certain uh, recommendation to, to amend that law, I don't think it will have a considerable percentage to be even discussed or considered by, by... You will get assigned somewhere far, far away where your voice will be completely unheard. This morning, you have heard what the different agencies of uh, the executive branch is doing in terms of uh, policy making as well as enforcement. And they have highlighted their plans and what they're doing to end impunity. And our major role is to make sure that all these initiatives are being communicated. All the information, whether good or bad, are disseminated properly and objectively. For example, is there is a MOA with the PNP, PNP approach, PCOO, so that uh, they will be able to uh, receive training or capacity building on how to communicate their programs better. Uh, it's between the Bureau of Communication Services because PNP has their uh, human rights-based approach action plan and they would want that to be printed. So we are helping them uh, craft and uh, print out or publish their action plan as well as to tie up with the television station which is PTV as well as Radio ng Bayan so that they will be able to disseminate their information. I think it's very important also to inform people of why it's important not to settle and allow themselves to be treated this way. It is important also to say that they have to know why their rights, they have to realize that there are uh, instances that they can say no, that they can report to the different authorities about uh, whatever is happening in their area. It is important to empower them so that they will be able to fight and so that they will be very vigilant. Pero nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong lahat at kayo ay dumalo. At iniimbita po namin kayong sumali sa aming marcha sa November 23.